Where's your money going when you donate to charities? Where is it really going? And how can you choose the right charity whenever you have thousands of options? Listen until the end to hear a really interesting story that may change your entire perspective on giving. I'm not trying to bait you into watching the whole video, but it does just happen to be at the end. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos on raising intentional children and living intentional lives. We publish a new video every Friday. You have millions of options when it comes to giving, charities, nonprofits, and all of that in the United States. That's a blessing and a curse. It's outstanding that we have so many different options, but at the same time, it can be equally overwhelming. There's 1.5 million nonprofits in the United States. And the good news is, as we have so many of these charitable organizations, giving has actually been increasing every year in the United States since 1977. And most of that giving actually comes from individuals, not corporations. Americans gave $410 billion to charities in 2017, with 40% of millennials doing so through a monthly giving enrollment. It has been shown that you do give more whenever you're involved in some sort of monthly ongoing contribution plan compared to those who just give kind of randomly or a lump sum once a year. Just something to think about. But all of this does beg the question, how do I know who I should be giving my money to? And I'm glad you asked because that's exactly what we're going to talk about. All charities are not created equally and there are criteria to help you choose. First, you'll have to look at what type of cause you want to give to hunger, clean water, disaster relief, mission work, etc. And then you'll have to find a reputable place to give. What do I mean by reputable? I mean a charity who is a good steward of your money. Let's look at the American Red Cross, for example. They're one of the most popular charities. 91% of the money you donate to the American Red Cross goes directly to the cause. Where does the other 9% go? administrative costs, fundraising, advertising, and many other expenses and fees. That's not necessarily a bad thing, and the American Red Cross don't necessarily have a bad rate, especially considering how big they are, but you just have to look at where all of your money is going every dollar to see how much is actually going to the cause, and how much does it cost to keep the charity going, how much are they spending on the flyers and the pamphlets that they send you in the mail, how much are they spending on marketing, that kind of stuff. So all of that being said, the American Red Cross is still a gigantic aid to the entire world. And it's now well over a $3 billion organization. And to manage a charity that large, perhaps it makes sense that their CEO earns over $500,000 a year. Or maybe that bothers you and you don't think any CEO of any charity should earn over $500,000 a year. These are things you have to decide for yourself and you have to keep in mind when trying to find a charity. I think an argument could be made on both sides on whether that's enough money for what he's doing or whether that's way too much money for anyone running a charity. Arguments can be made on both sides of the coin. So now we're left with figuring out how do we make this decision. There are several great resources out there to help you find a good charity and we're going to talk about a few of them. Charity Navigator, a source to evaluate charities through browsing or searching for specific charities. They give an overall star rating as well as a financial score and a score for accountability and transparency. Charity Watch, another source to evaluate charities. They don't simply give automated charity reports, they dive deep into the ins and outs of charities to help you make an informed decision. They use a letter rating system as opposed to stars. The Better Business Bureau Wise Giving Alliance. The Better Business Bureau isn't just for businesses anymore. This alliance puts together thorough reports of a charity's spending and activity. Charity Truth. This website is ran more like a blog. They post articles about specific charities and go into detail about their activities. They also have some great lists of charities broken down by category. Give Well. They provide summaries and reports on charities from all categories. I always learn something new about a charity I'm researching when I visit GiveWell. I think all of these resources are awesome. We've come a long way in how we can evaluate charities today. And I actually spend weeks putting together a list of 20 different charities that I think are all meet the criteria that most people want to see in a charity. I'll put a link to that below, but you can check that out and see if any of those 20 charities are what you want to invest in. And remember, there are needs all over the world. While third world countries may have a lot of needs, and I know they do, and there are plenty of charities out there to help them, we also have a lot of needs in the states. For example, 42 million Americans are suffering from hunger, so there are needs right in the United States, but feel free to branch out or do both. And by the way, on my list, I didn't discriminate based on the religion or anything like that of the charity, but most of the charities, almost all of the charities on that list are Christian charities, not because I'm a Christian and I wanted to find Christian charities, but because most charities seem to be Christian charities. 
if we're living as we should be as Christians, makes sense. So since I started working on this video and had this idea and made that list of the charities, I started trying to read some books about giving and things like that, but randomly the book that actually sparked the most interest in giving wasn't really a book on giving. It was Jesus Among Secular Gods by Rabbi Zacharias. It's actually by Rabbi Zacharias and Vince Vitale. So this is a story that made me angry and then made me feel a little bit guilty and then changed my perspective on how we give. So listen to the story and then go check out that list and start giving somewhere. Would you choose a phone or a life? In the story, a man was walking on a railroad track and he saw a boy who had got his leg caught in the track. And as luck would have it, there was a train heading right towards the boy. As the man went to save the boy, the man's phone fell out of his pocket and onto the tracks. There was no time. The man had to make a choice, save the boy, or go back and save his cell phone. He chose his cell phone. The boy was hit by the train. When the man was later interviewed, the reporter asked him why he chose his phone over a little boy's life. He said, because the train would have crushed my phone, I didn't want to have to buy a new one. We're all appalled when we hear this. How could someone choose a phone over a life? But we do it every day. We know that many lives could be saved if we chose to put our 500 or $1,000 into certain organizations but we still choose to purchase that new iPhone. I'm not saying any of this to guilt you, I'm saying this because it made me think whenever I heard that story. Our money really can make a huge difference. A few hundred dollars may not be much to us if we're willing to go buy a phone with it, for example, but that few hundred dollars can make a huge difference in people's lives around the world. It could be everything to a starving village or to a child without clean water to drink. Now I feel like one of those infomercials that has the sad faces and the sad children in it and tries to guilt you into giving or the sad animals those are probably more popular that's not my intent giving should come from grace not from guilt in fact we actually teach our kids to never give out of guilt if a homeless person asks for money there's a whole bunch of arguments to be made on should you or should you not give them money and that would be an entirely different video because it's quite a long conversation. But we teach our kids that you should never give to a homeless person, for example, just because you feel guilty. If you feel led to, fine. But if you feel guilty, that's not a good reason to give. Anyways, I think this does put it all into perspective. That story, the idea of not giving out of guilt, giving out of grace, it puts it all into perspective. We shouldn't feel the guilt, but we should feel the need to give. Now check out that list of 20 charities, find one that you like, or find a different one on one of the sources that I gave you to research charities and start giving somewhere. Even if you already give to your church, you can always give more. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos on money, minimalism, and our travel journey around the world. If you're interested in raising intentional children, check out my new book, Intentional Children. I will put a link to that below. That is all for today. I will see you next week.